Samtastic here, and this time I'm actually doing that video that was requested about um, removing the fan uh, for you mathematics, and looking for the um, in the manual. Oddly, they seem to completely skirt around um, what it looks like under that RAM panel. They just refuse to show the heat sink at all in in their manuals. Uh, so I can't see for certain if um, you know exactly how accessible it is the um, my my brother has I cannot remember the model for it um, but he he's got a gateway very similar to mine uh, that actually has um, a dedicated graphics processor it's the HD 2600 instead of the HD 3200 and the way that it's built you actually uh, if I recall correctly, you actually would have to take the whole thing apart in order to get to the heatsink that's on the GPU. So uh, you can still remove the CPU fan, but you can't you can't put fresh paste on the GPU side without actually like pulling the whole thing apart because for some reason motherboard manufacturers just uh, or the laptop manufacturers just don't want to make these things accessible, even though it's you know that you could just like cut your plastic a little bit further out. Sometimes it's as easy as that. Um, there's some engineer somewhere that's chuckling at you for not being able to do it. But uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and at least show you how to take the, uh, take the fan off mine. So we'll, uh, we'll do that now. So here we are looking at uh, the bottom of the computer here. Now I apologize for the slightly lower lighting, um, but from what I can tell it looks like you should still be able to see everything just okay. Um, you will need a generally a Phillips screwdriver, and the Phillips screwdriver needs to be kind of small uh, for some of these screws, especially once we get down to the fan. Um, but it, I mean, it doesn't usually need to be like an eyeglasses screwdriver or anything. But this uh, on these computers, this is the uh, the RAM compartment thing here, and conveniently, if you notice, it's a little large to have just a couple of RAM sticks in there. It also houses the heat sink and fan for the CPU and IGP. So the CPU is right here and the graphics processor is right under there, if I recall. Um, so to get this fan off, this this screw actually right here, uh, I messed it up at some point. It like split. I'm not sure what happened. Maybe it was always like that, but it had like a little spring on it. It's really goofy and weird. Um, so just you might need to unscrew that. I don't need to because it's broken. Um, but you are going to have a couple of screws around the board here. One of them is over here. One of them is right here. And then you've also got the four on the CPU. And if the people that designed it were um, nice, smart, whatever, they they should have these numbered on here. This is one, two, three, four, and five. You know, I think this one over here says six, so I'm not sure where five is. Um, but in any case, the way that you generally want to do this is is it's it's like it's like having a tire on the car. When you do um, when you do the lug nuts on your on your wheel, you want to do them in a star pattern, or or if it's only got four lug nuts, just that kind of cross pattern to keep that even pressure on top of that CPU basically is what we're going for. So it doesn't really matter if you go four down to one or one up to four. Um, so we'll go ahead and just start with one. We'll unscrew one. And it'll, these, on this board, uh, the screws are actually contained um, so that you're not gonna drop them. A lot of motherboards don't do that. They'll actually, you'll end up dropping screws on your on your board. Don't freak out if that happens. Uh, the best thing to do is try to be calm about it. Don't pick up the, the board and try to shake it out. Uh, just take a moment, take a breath, and and see if you can like get a pair of tweezers or something else where you can just pick that up as carefully as possible so you're not dragging metal across your board. Uh, but it happens. You drop screws on, on motherboards when you work on them. It, it just happens. So we got one and then two, and then we're going to come over here to three. Pop. And then four. Pop. That's one of the convenient things if you have like a magnetic 
um, screwdriver it can if you're taking those out it can actually help you immensely in taking screws out or putting them in so I'll go ahead and take off that screw there and then remove this one over in this part and then this is the plug that powers the fan so you can just pull that off and carefully uh, lift it's it's kind of tucked underneath there and it looks like this screw is actually still sticking so let's give that a little bit more loosening there we go and that's removing that so uh, that is how you take off the heatsink and fan at least on this computer so I hope mathematics that it's very similar to you uh, do you like how you can't even see my key on there because it got rubbed off a long long time ago so I'm not showing anything off here um, yep yeah, so that's that's uh, that's that in a nutshell uh, and putting it back in is basically the reverse of removing it so get that in there you don't have to plug it in first you can plug it in last or unplug it first or whatever you want to do with that there's no real importance there um, oh and I'm making a newbie mistake actually so battery out um, I'm kinda tired I'll admit it so the battery is supposed to come out uh, I live on the edge sometimes with my own equipment um, don't always do all the safety steps so um, We'll make sure that that's that that's in the right place, kind of notched in there. And um, actually, before before I screw all that back in, no, okay, sorry. Um, I was thinking I can show where the screws are on that, but I already did that in the video, so I'm not going to waste your time with that with the fan fix one. Anyway, um, yeah, so you just get those screwed back in and as I said it's the, the inverse so we'll do that one two three and And now initially I just I just kind of get it until it starts giving a little bit of resistance and um, so that I don't start bending it or stripping out screws or whatever else so you just kind of you just kind of tighten it until you know that it's secure in there and then you can go through and you can you can give it that extra little twist now if the screwdriver starts slipping I highly recommend you try to find one with a different size bit um, because otherwise, like in this case here, a couple of these screws are starting to get stripped out a little bit there, and that's that's not really a good thing. Because if those get stripped out, you just cannot do this anymore. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it's just uh, it's a good idea to to try to make sure you got the right size screwdriver for it. Because these are tiny little um, screws there. So since I'm on this actually, and I've got it turned off and I've got it open, uh, one of I've got it nearby here. One of my friends, uh, I got him to upgrade the RAM in his computer where it took a, a two gigs of RAM and he only had one gig in it. And so he gave me his old RAM and since one of my sticks went bad. And so I've only got two gigs in there right now. I used to have four, but one of those sticks went bad. So I'm gonna take one of these 512s that I've got here and put it up to two and a half gigs of RAM just to have that slight increase and so handling this RAM you don't want to touch the metal contacts on it and this is actually really simple so I'm gonna set that there I'm gonna show you how to take RAM out there are these little clips that are on there for laptops and you just kinda of pull them to the side and the RAM pops up and you see that how it just kinda of shut up and you can take that out and they've got the little notch there that it's really easy to see on these unless the sticker's in the way like that one but the notch is right there and so you can just uh, to put the RAM back in you just kinda put it in there make sure you make sure you push it in all the way because in a lot of cases I've seen like trying to install this laptop RAM you'll just kinda half-assed get it in there and it's not good enough so we got that secured in place and we're gonna take this next one here 
and they do conveniently both happen to be DDR2, uh, same speed RAM, so we'll get that one fixed in there and push it down as well. And that is how to do that. So you got a little bonus for how to install laptop RAM as well. And uh, so we'll close that on up. And I hope that, uh, that that helps you out mathematics. I'm sorry it took so long for me to do this. I, uh, I, don't, I don't really have a good excuse, but, uh, but I did buckle down and get that done today. So I hope that helps you out and you will see me and or my computer later. <laughs>